Tony with Imported Technology here. Gonna go ahead and show you guys how to take apart a, a KA24DE out of a 240SX. Um, this one is actually out of a 95S14. We're gonna go ahead and show you how to pull the, top, pull the head off and make sure you have all of your timing aligned. You're gonna go ahead and start out by taking out the distributor. There's just two 10 millimeter bolts. We already have ours loosened for the sake of the time of the video. They are kind of long. Once you get them out, just go ahead and put those off to the side. Make sure you keep track of where all your bolts are. I know them pretty well. And go ahead and just pull on the distributor. It'll come right out. We do not we do not need to have timing set yet because uh, it's pretty straightforward with the distributor setting that back at one. Um, after we got, get that done, we're going to go ahead and pull off the valve cover. We already have ours, all the bolts out, so we're just going to go ahead and pull it off. And then go ahead and pull off the gasket and discard it. You're going to want to replace it with uh, your rebuild here. You never want to reuse those. After that, we're going to go ahead and take off the front cover. Um, there's going to be a series of 10s and 12s. And they're all going to be slightly different sizes. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, you don't really have to mark them or anything like that. They're all different sizes enough where you can figure out where they go pretty pretty easy. And then you're going to make sure that you take out the three that are facing down. There's going to be one back right behind the distributor hole that you're going to want to pull out too. And these you're probably going to have to use a wrench on. You might be able to get a socket in. We already have ours broken loose. I used a wrench. Make sure you get it all the way on because these will round off nice and easy. As I said, you're going to need a little bar and a little hammer. You can just tap on it if you can get at it. You're going to want to be, generally speaking, pretty careful. But um, there's nothing here that we're not rebuilding that we'll, we will be okay with. And of course, she's going to come off. There we go. And you're going to just want to wiggle it back and forth with two guide pins, and it'll come right off. Now at this point, as you can see, we can see all of our timing chains um, and we can see the cam molds. This is going to be the easiest for us to go ahead and get it at top dead center. You're going to need a 27 millimeter socket. Go ahead and throw that on the crank and turn it. Um, on the crank, if you can come and go ahead and zoom down here, there's going to be some notches on one of the rows that are going to line up with this pin here. We're going to need, as we're on a compression stroke, we're going to need the second one from the edge, from the left side. So you're just going to want to go nice and easy, and there we are at top dead center. No, we're not at top dead center. We're at opposite of top dead center. And of course, the compression stroke is going to be a lot of fun. There we go. And now we're almost there. And right there. Now, as you can see, if we can go ahead and get a shot of the cam lobes. As you can see here, we're at top dead center. We're at the second notch from the, from the left side. And if we can go ahead and get a shot of the cam lobes, if you look at the cam lobes, the front cam lobes will both be facing out directly opposite of each other is where we're going to want them. All right. You'll notice that the left pin is almost straight up and this one's going to be facing out at an angle. 
At this point, you're, we're going to want to go ahead and mark exactly where we're at on both on both notches here before we go ahead and take anything else apart. You're going to want to do this with a white, a, a sharpie, or whatever you have laying around. You're going to need a little bit of paper towel to go ahead and wipe it off so the paint will stick at least a little bit. Again, you got to make sure you're not rubbing around too much. I always like to take a picture of everything before I take it apart. Uh, fortunately, we have a video this time, and I've done this many, many times. And you're just going to go ahead. And I always mark exactly where that dot is, and I mark the link above it. All right, so the dot, and I color all over that link above. Dot, and I color all over above, above that link. And just fill it up. And we're going to go ahead and let it dry for a second, then we're going to keep pulling things apart. Again, make sure that you mark every single one of the dots. And I always like to mark my crank too, just so I can remember. Um, and we're going to want to go ahead and pull off the timing the timing tensioner. Just go ahead, it's going to be two 10 millimeters. Just take it off, nice and easy. Try and take the, everything out evenly always when it comes to um, engine internals. There's only going to be a little bit of tension here so we don't have to worry about it stabbing us in the face or anything like that. Just make sure you don't drop anything into the oil pan. Just go ahead and pull this off and set this aside also. Um, as you can see, we no longer have a chain guide on this side. Normally you would. Uh, the previous owner already took it off. I highly recommend removing it. These will oftentimes break and end up in your oil pan. And we would do not want to see that. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call my cameraman in. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull off the two main bolts for the camshafts. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pull that chain off. So, oh shit. We'll break the bar. <laughs> As you can see, sometimes you may need a breaker bar. These things are on there incredibly tight. Um, the socket is going to be a 24 and uh, you're going to need a buddy to do this at bare minimum, a buddy, maybe like four. Right. Thank you Steve. Now we're going to go ahead and pull these out the rest of the way. Again, they'll come off nice and easy now that we haven't broke loose. It's just an initial. Um, you, if you're by yourself, you can use an impact, but I always recommend against using an impact on internals, just in case you do something stupid uh, and you strip something out. That's no good for anyone. Uh, these bolts aren't going to be super long. They're going to be um, pretty easy to pull out. Let's go ahead and slide them right out. The chain will not just fall off into your oil pan or anything like that. You want to keep these to go in the same cab shaft just in case they were not completely different. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to need to put a little bit of tension and these will pop right off and we'll pull it right out. And just kind of pop them out on each side, keep everything aligned. If you don't, it's okay, again, because we marked everything. So just go ahead, pull it out, drop it down, and go ahead and put it off to the side. I always like to zip tie mine together so I don't lose them. At this point, we're going to go ahead and we can go ahead and pull out the camshafts. Um, to do this, uh, we're going to have to make sure that we go in a sequence. You can't just go and pull off the, the guides on top here. We're going to have to make sure that you go cross and all the way out. You're going to want to start on the middle and you're going to work your way out. And not at any time do you want to take these all the way out. You want to go in sequence and loop break them all loose and then take them out a little bit more all the way across the board. So you're going to want to break it loose in the middle and then go to the, one, the next one in the middle. Just break that loose. Again, your camshafts tend to be pretty soft, so you're going to want to be incredibly careful that we don't break one or mess up any of these holes because, again, they need to be torqued down properly and we do not want to have to deal with 
Helicoiling, any of these. 